Hello, I am Mohammad Musharraf, a blockchain, crypto and web3 expert. So far, we have progressed from talking about web3 as a whole to then diving into its base layer blockchain and value layer cryptocurrencies. In this video, we will explore blockchain based decentralized applications which forms the application layer of web3. Decentralized apps, also known as dApps, are applications or programs of Web3 that offer functionalities similar to your everyday apps and platforms, but differ from them in the fact that dApps run on blockchain networks. And as blockchains are decentralized networks, it means that dApps are not fully operated and governed by a central organization but by the users of the platform. So, dApps can do almost anything our regular applications do, but in a decentralized manner. Let us break that down for you. For instance, on a regular social media platform like Facebook, a central entity makes all decisions, controls our data, and uses our attention to show us ads and generate revenue. On a social media dApp, the users of the platform get to govern the platform, control their data, and earn a part of the revenue if they choose to share their data with the platform. An iteration of similar principles can be found across all other types of Web3 platforms and applications, from web browsers like Brave to blockchain-based games like Axie Infinity. Another important aspect of dApps is that they are usually open source, meaning that the source code of these apps is made publicly available to everyone for assessment, usage, and modifications. Additionally, the dApp users get to have a say in any significant change happening within the app. These differences between a decentralized application and a centralized one stem from the fact that dApps replace middlemen or centralized middleware with decentralized smart contracts based on a blockchain. What are smart contracts though? In short, smart contracts are lines of codes that form digital contracts on a blockchain and they take a predetermined action when certain predefined conditions are met. In the case of dApps, Smart contracts help enforce the rules and terms set for the app on the backend. And a single D app may need multiple smart contracts to enforce and operate different rules and functionalities. To understand this, let's take the simplest example. Suppose a user wants to exchange their cryptocurrency ETH for USDT on a decentralized exchange. In this case, a smart contract make sure that the user only gets USDT in their wallet when they have sent their ETH to the exchange. Unless that condition is met, the smart contract does not send the USDT tokens to the user. However, there are also more complex smart contracts that can moderate any form of transaction without the need of a middleman or centralized middleware. You might wonder what else sets dApps apart from centralized applications. Let us look at some of the advantages that they provide. We shared in our video on blockchains that because blockchains are operated by multiple nodes, each acting as an individual server, the possibility of downtime in a blockchain is very low. The same applies to dApps as these applications are primarily based on a blockchain network. This gets rid of a major problem of downtimes in Web2, which occurs due to centralized servers with a single point of failure. Moreover, users can log into dApps only using their Web3 wallets. These apps do not need a user to provide their personal information to use the app, ensuring maximum user privacy. Thanks to blockchain security, the data of decentralized apps are also highly secure and cannot be manipulated. Combined with these, the benefits of a user-focused economy, ownership of personal data, and fair distribution of revenue, and dApps 
start to seem like the utopian future of internet applications. But as with everything, there are some downsides to dApps as well. For one, in their ideal decentralization stage, dApps can be difficult to maintain and any changes needed in the app need the consensus of the majority of its users, which in itself is a cumbersome process. Besides, given the storage and scalability limitations of blockchains, scaling dApps to wide user base is much more complicated compared to traditional applications. Given the simple ways of logging into traditional applications, logging into dApps with one's crypto wallet keys can also come off as a temporary drawback of dApps. However, once people mount the learning curve as they did with the internet in its early days, the same will most likely start to seem as simple as logging into Facebook using our Gmail account seems today. Let's now look at some examples of dApps working in different sectors. Launched in 2021, Mirror is a decentralized platform for long-form written content that is owned and governed by its community and it rewards its writers for the engagement they get. Ethereum Name Service or ENS is a decentralized counterpart of domain registrars like GoDaddy. Further, Audius is a decentralized music streaming platform that allows its musicians to create music and reach a wide audience without taking away ownership of the music from its creators. If that's not enough, there's an entire ecosystem of decentralized finance applications that operate on smart contracts without any involvement from central authorities. In fact, dApps can potentially replicate the entire centralized app ecosystem while making it user-centric and community-governed. And the above examples make it clear that dApps, if deployed thoughtfully, can be used in a multitude of industries including finance, entertainment, social media, gaming, and more. To summarize this video, dApps or decentralized apps work on a blockchain network and do not have a central entity running them. The essence of Web3 is decentralization and through dApps, we saw how this concept is actually being utilized and will be utilized in our day-to-day -day lives on the next-gen internet. In the following video, we will be talking about DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations and how they help operate and govern decentralized platforms. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.